The story from 2003. At that time, I was working in Dubai, five years into my job. I was doing extremely well at work, got the promotion that I want, got the car that I want. I'm learning new things, had a great team. So I think seems to be like, okay, it's, it's really well. But I was not happy. Something felt wrong. I didn't know what is it, but I was negative. I was pessimistic despite all the results and all the successes which, uh, which was happening in my life. My name is Ahmed Khaled and I am the host of this Unleashed podcast. We speak mainly around personal development and entrepreneurship. Our mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential. And this is by interviewing CEOs, entrepreneurs and coaches physically in Dubai to extract their wisdom and change your life. Now you can enjoy the episode. Faisal, are you ready to unleash? I am ready. What is the percentage of unleashing? 110%. <laughs> Faisal, the inspiration. You know that, uh, as I told you, you are one of the most inspiring people that inspired me to check and start thinking differently. What's the purpose in life? Thanks so much for that. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'm really happy. It's in line with my purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's a pleasure having you, uh, you here today, uh, Faisal. And I believe many people will be inspired from the amazing story that you have had, legacy, uh, an inspiration, influence in corporation. And one time you moved out of the corporate to pursue your purpose in life. So intrigued, so inspired to listen your story again and share it with our audience. Great. Thanks a lot for having me here and having this platform. So I can start the, the story from 2003. At that time, I was working in Dubai five years into my job. I was doing extremely well at work, got the promotion that I want, got the car that I want. I'm learning new things, had a great team. So I think seems to be like, okay, it's, it's really well. But I was not happy. Something felt wrong. I didn't know what is it, but I was negative. I was pessimistic despite all the results and all the successes which, uh, which was happening in my life. And I met someone, I don't think it's by chance, but it's uh, something that fate brought that, uh, that meeting, okay, who presented herself as, as a life coach. And I was like, oh, a life coach, what do you do? <laughs> and she explained what she does. And at that time, the whole concept of coaching was really new. So I thought, okay, I'd like to experiment, you know, because I have a situation that I'm not happy about and I'd like to change it. And it was a big investment. It was almost 15% of my salary at that time that I put and I said, okay, I'm willing to experiment here if it's going to give me a benefit. So I went with that commitment and that curiosity also. And we went through a model which was called the Wheel of Life. Mm. Okay. And that was like an eye opener for me is to put my satisfaction level at different domains of life. So it showed me all the elements in life. And what I was doing well was work, career, and learning and growth. But when I looked at the other elements, which is health, spirituality, family, uh, friends, uh, passions, uh, volunteering, you know, all these different elements, it was quite low. And I said, yeah, I think I was just focusing on one part of my life and ignoring the rest of my life, thinking that I will be happy, okay? And I shifted my attention into other parts of life and those elements that I started improving, for example, giving attention to health, uh, reducing my weight, going to the gym, uh, spending more time with my family. I moved from Dubai to Saudi. I spent more time with them. Those elements enriched also my work and my learning and it made my life more complete, okay? Instead of the thinking that, okay, if I reduce my focus from work and I put it into other dimensions in life, it means that I will have less input or I will be perceived as, you know, lazy or not committed, but actually no. When we give attention to the key dimensions in our life and we see growth and we see uh, impact, uh, we get joy, we get more energy, okay? That we can deploy also at work, that we can deploy at learning and we have a more fulfilled life. 
and that shift you know was a stepping point into so many other other positive steps in my life okay um i wanted to work in many countries to explore different cultures and to enjoy different lifestyles and i was able to do it over the years so um you know i worked in six countries so i moved to from saudi moving to to thailand uh, then moving to kuwait then moving to morocco and Professionally, it was really enriching, but also meeting, meeting different people and connecting with different people and learning from different cultures. So, for example, in, in Thailand, I started to be curious about self-awareness, okay. about mindfulness, mm -hmm. about reflection, and the power of thoughts, okay? The power of being present and experimenting with different practices, uh, breathing techniques, uh, meditation, yoga, uh, taking into that and then going to Mecca for a pilgrimage, okay, and then coming back. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's really just an, an exploration about myself and enriching my self-awareness and my understanding of myself, what drives me, what brings me joy in life. So it's not just about what I thought, which is about career growth, about achievement, about actualizing myself from the professional side but actually that there are so many other things in life that also that I can achieve through, that I can enjoy. Um, could be through moments of joy with family, with friends. It uh, could be about places where I can put my knowledge and sharing with, with others. It could be about key spiritual moments in my life, okay? Uh, it could be about improving my financial situation, okay, for a bigger goal. So that took me also for a direction that, okay, now, it's not just about the professional side, but there are other domains that I'm developing, that I'm, I'm growing. And I came with two key pillars of activities that I really enjoy myself, okay? And I found a lot of energy. And the first one was to have a positive impact on others, mm -hmm. okay? And the second one is to have a life of learning and growing, okay? And a lot of the first one, which is about have a positive impact, I was able to do at work, okay, at the people who work with me, my teams, my colleagues, but also with my family members, with my friends, through the organization that we were supporting. So that was there. But the life of learning and growing was not just also professional learning. It's about the things that I want to learn about myself, the skills and life that I want to learn, about the experiences that I want to grow, um, the activities that I want to, to do, whether it's in adventure, whether it's in sports, um, and, and so on. So these two pillars became like an engine that gives me a lot of energy, okay, um, to take the stresses that I have in different dimensions of life with, with ease, okay, that I'm energized, okay, yeah. and it's not just me. Mm -hmm. Also, I can share that with others, and then I can take more, okay, mm -hmm. so I can take bigger roles, bigger responsibilities, but I have the energy to deal with it, okay. Mm -hmm. I have the self-awareness, uh, to know, you know, if I'm dealing with it well or not, okay, if I'm managing the situation well or not, if I need support, okay. And throughout that journey, I had great coach also that she's been helping me, you know, to reflect, to, to journal, um, maybe to overcome some of the challenges, to improve my self-awareness, to recognize some of the things that, you know, I've been doing well. Um, and, and, and that was, you know, this whole machine started to, to come and to develop until I say, okay, now actually I know my purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. And from these different pillars and different elements, I say, okay, my purpose is about inspiring myself and others to reach their summits, okay? So it has element of inspiration, which is a positive impact, but not just for others. In order to inspire others, I need to be inspired also and look for different sources of inspiration, okay? And it has the other elements of summits, which is not the physical summits that I like to take, but also the summits which are the challenges, the goals that we put in our life. And usually a summit is not about the summit, it's about the journey to the summit and how to enjoy that process of preparation, which takes months before that. And then embarking on the journey until you go there and you find that actually what you learned is not what, what you achieved on the summit, okay? That's something which you enjoy for a minute or two or 10, but it's all that journey, all the growth, all the learning, all the experiences that I gained or the people that I interact with gain through that process of self-discovery, self-preparation, self-management, 
and growth. Do you think what you have gone through allowed you to think in a different way and say, listen, I want to live a fulfilled life and I'm planning on X date mm. that I will take this and I will do whatever I love. Do you think that this was a reason for that? I think that was a preparation, mm -hmm. but also I love to do visualization, okay? Because visualization is a critical part of how I set goals for myself. So one key visualization was also part of inspiration, okay? Being inspired by others. And to be inspired by others, I need to be present. Mm -hmm. And I need to observe and see and feel, okay? So all the work that I've been doing helped me to be more present, okay? Being present, helped me to be inspired by the opportunities and the resources around me. And one inspiration were the older people who were quite active and happy in their life, okay? So I visualize if I'm at 70 or 80 years old, what sort of life I want to have, okay? And then I bring it back also to the wheel of life, okay? What is the health level that I want to have, okay? Do I want to be really healthy, to be active, or do I want to be sick that other people will be looking after me, okay? So what kind of activities I want to engage in? I'd like to be in the outdoor. I'd like to be in nature. I'd like to be able to experience life even at, at old age, okay? What spiritual life that I'd like to have? I'd like to have the wisdom to be able to share all this knowledge with others if I'm at 70 or 80 and have continued impact instead of just closing on myself at that age. So I visualized the life at 70 or 80 years old from all these aspects and I picture And, and different images, okay, that became so compelling for me that in order to have that, then I cannot wait until 60 or 65 to retire and then live that life, okay? Then I think I need to step out, learn new things, start living that life from an early age and experiment with it and see how it goes, you know? And that was one of the triggers also is that visualization helped me to say, okay, I want to have an impact in a different way. I think the opportunity that I'd, I had at work was really amazing and it was massive. Mm. But then I said, let me do it in a different way. I think it became my comfort zone. Okay. Very easy for me. I said, let me learn something different. And when I decided to stop, I said, let me prepare financially for it. Mm -hmm. Let me prepare skill wise for it, okay? Um, let me prepare also physically where I'm going to live, how I'm going to sustain myself and so on. And I brought that maybe five years, six years, you know, in advance and to start to save, invest, um, you know, think of how can I live and, and so on and, and building that machine so I can, be, I can be ready. In terms of skills, I said, okay, if, if I'd like to train and develop others, let me do it while I'm at working. So when there were opportunities that I can be a trainer for specific programs, then I say, okay, I'd like to take that and let me experiment here. So it was a good also playground to do and to see, okay, can I do it? What is the impact? Is it working? What do I need to change? So while I'm still in the job, committed for the job, but also I'm doing things which are linked to my passion, linked to my vision of life. And I had the energy to do all of these things and have more time for myself also. To explore and to experiment and that just put all these pieces together that when I thought that I was ready in terms of skills when financially also I was ready when there was a compelling view of okay these are the type of activities that I'd like to do this is where I'd like to live I applied for masters in positive psychology and I got accepted I said okay this would be a good transition to move from working full-time into moving to university learning more, okay, and gaining a skill that will be helpful for my life, mm -hmm. okay, but also that I can apply and it will be helpful for, for others. I did not visualize if I'm going to do it as a business um, or maybe with NGOs or maybe in teaching. All these were possibilities, but I did not stick to one route, you know. I like to visualize and have different possibilities and I go through experiences and then I see which one I can go to because sometimes if we have a plan, we can get stuck. We can buy into that plan and we must make it happen. But what works with me, I like experimentation and have so many different options and then be flexible to go through it. I think the thing with purpose is the essence of the purpose is what behind it, okay, is what it brings for me and for others mm -hmm. rather than the mechanics 
of the activities itself? I think there are, it's rare people when they have a purpose in life. But if someone is listening to us right now mm. and want to understand what are the questions or the mechanisms that we need to ask ourselves to put us at least for the first step to find a meaning of life yeah. or a purpose in life. Yeah. What are those questions? There will be a few questions, but I think before the questions, I think it's good to reflect on the personal values because our values drive our behaviors, okay, and our choices. And if we are clear about our values, then we can align it with our actions and our um, behaviors. So it's good to spend time really reflecting on our values and what matters in our life, what are the principles that we have. And when that's there, then to question the choices that we take and the actions that we take is that what is the meaning behind that, okay? What is the impact from my action, okay? Who's getting impacted? In what way? In a positive way? In a negative way? Okay? And that can really become a benchmark to say, okay, if there is a good meaning behind it, if there is a good impact, if there is a positive impact from that, then it can energize us to take it more. But if what I'm doing is meaningless, it adds no value to me or to others, then it's a waste of my time, waste of my energy. And it could be something that I do because it's a habit. It could be something that I do because somebody else is asking me, but I really do not question why should I do that, okay? Why should I engage in this? Um, because if I value my time, my energy, um, my presence, then I will just engage in things which adds value to me, to my team, to my family, to my organization, to my community, you know, and to see where is, where is the value. That could be one question, okay? Uh, the other question is that, what do I want to be remembered for, okay? So I work with a team. Are they going to remember me by the achievement, by the discipline, by the KPIs, or is there something more meaningful, okay? an interaction that I had with them that had a positive impact on their personal life or it helped them in their career or it was inspiring for them uh, to take a different decision in their life, okay? Or maybe a, a principle that they experimented with or maybe a belief that they, uh, they challenge, okay? So this is one thing is that, okay, what do I want to be remembered for? And, and that's something that became also is like, I'd like to be an example. I will behave in a way which is positive also for others, okay? And, and that becomes like feeding itself, you know? We experiment with things, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but we learn and it keeps on uh, developing and improving. And it's, it's not a one day, it's a journey, you know? And sometimes we feel really inspired, motivated. Sometimes, you know, stress can take us away, but when we have self-awareness, when we have the mechanism around us to reflect by ourselves or with a coach or with someone that we trust, then we reduce the amount of deviation, you know, and we can take a step quicker. Unleash is the bridge between my purpose and my mission. And my mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential.